folks, welcome to Regular Guy DIY. Today I'm going to do a product review on the Bissell Crosswave. It's a multi-surface cleaner designed for hard flooring and area rugs. So we're going to unpack it, set it up, crank it up, and then I'm going to let you know what I think. So let's go. <laughs> To keep up with my latest DIY projects, tips, and product reviews, mash that subscribe button now and ring the bell so you don't miss out on my latest content. Let's get started. This is the Bissell brand general purpose cleaner. We're going to give this a try. It's concentrated so you do have to mix it with water, but I'm sure any pH neutral general purpose cleaner will probably work well. Let's see how it does. Be careful with the sharp things. Instruction manual, multi-surface cleaner, there's a starter bottle. Uh, this is a multi-purpose roller. It's soft with stiff brushes here in the center. We have an air filter. We have a handle. Cardboard. Watch the camera, Jeff. And I have no idea what this is. This looks like this must be some sort of cleaning tray. You can see where the Bissell sits in it, uh, so maybe that's for storage. It doesn't drip all over your floor. Get that out of here. And finally, Okay, we'll peel off the turtle shell. Uh, this appears to be our cleaning detergent tank. Oh, not, I won't throw that on the floor. And here we go. So not too much to assemble. Install the handle, mount the bracket that appears to be for the cord, and put the roller on and let's go. All right, I'm going to do something that I rarely do off camera anyway. I'm going to, fo I'm going to follow the instructions. I know. Anyone who knows me knows that's crazy. All right, let's get this thing unpackaged. Okay, it does have a roller on it already, so it appears that we have a backup, so that's always nice. The first step. Is to just pop the handle in there. Clicks in place, okay. Here's where our cord goes, so I don't know what this other piece is for just yet. Okay, so this is our formula bottle, and on the back it shows two different uh, levels that you can mix the water and formula. So if you're just doing a small area and you don't need to fill the whole thing up, I mean, you don't want that sitting for a long period of time. You fill that up with water to here, add a little bit of formula. If you're doing a larger area, same thing here. Fill with water to here, then your formula. We're not going to do that just yet. Yeah, why not? Okay, we filled the bottle up. There's, uh, like I said, two areas, whether you're going small or large. Today we're going big. All right, no drip. Snaps in place. I was wrong about that bracket. It isn't to coil the cord, so I'm not quite sure what that is just yet. Uh, and I'll go this way. I'm a lefty, so I wrap the cord backwards. Despite my second grade teacher's attempts to uh, convert me to a right-hander, Mrs. Diaz, if you're still around, and I don't know, you'd be, what, 140 now? Okay. All right. So this little part here is part of our cleaning tray. And this snaps into the side here. There's a clip. Okay, still not quite sure what that does just yet, but we will see. We will see. We have 
jumped ahead in the instructions by filling the water tank without reading the instructions. My bad. All right, cleaning our floors. Step one, plug the machine in. So there are two buttons on top. One is for rugs. The other is for hard flooring. Now, I noticed that they said rug and not carpet. So I'm guessing this isn't something they necessarily want you to use on carpets. Recline the handle. It says before each use, hold the solution spray trigger for 10 seconds. That's this right here underneath the handle. And that allows the system to be primed with the water and cleaning detergent solution. So on both hard flooring and area rugs, you can use this in both directions, forward and backwards, while discharging cleaning solution. Finally, emptying the dirty water tank. That's right here. There's a, there's a button here. You push this down, pop it out. There's a filter in top. So the one that we had in the package is a second filter. That's nice. So you want to remove this filter. Pull this cover off, and then you have the nasty stuff. Now, to clean the brush roll and chamber. It's like we're on a date or something. Want to dance? Grasp the brush roll window right here at the top. There's an area where it says pull. Snap that out. This comes off easily. Pull the roll out. How do we do that? Lifts out here on this side first. Okay. Using the easy clean storage tray, as they refer to it. I know I'm holding this thing up here in my arm like a baby. So you're not gonna hold it in your arms while you're doing this, obviously. I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. But with this on the floor, you place the unit on the self-cleaning storage tray. You pour water in this tray to the max line. In the very front, there's a little tab that says max. So you well, put a few ounces in there. I'm guessing maybe eight to 10 ounces of water. Then you turn the machine on, press hard flooring. You recline the machine while it's in the storage, and that gets the brush rolling again. Allow the machine to run for 10 to 15 minutes. Ah! 10 to 15 seconds. That's way better. Okay. And that should pick up all the water in the tray by doing that. And of course, it's collecting in the dirty water tank. So after you've used the self-cleaning tray, then you pop this thing out and dump it. I thought it was kind of interesting. I didn't know what this little clip-on device is for, but this is for you to place your roller in, which is much easier if this is sitting on the floor than if I'm holding it. And so you can remove your spear roller, and then you can remove your roller from the machine and place it in here. That way it can air dry, doesn't get moldy or mildewed. Not a bad idea. Let's give it a try. I started on an area rug using the dry mode only. I would compare the performance to that of your typical lightweight vacuum and say that it did a pretty fair job. As you can see by the light on the front, I gave it a try in wet mode just to see how much soil it would pick up. You're going to see the results of that later on. Its reach under furniture is pretty comparable to the majority of vacuums on the market. There is no external attachment. so. I had to get a little creative to get into some of those hard to reach spots. The transition between area rugs and hard flooring wasn't perfect. There was a little bit of residue that was left on the wood flooring, but it just took a simple sweep at a 90 degree angle to pick it up. There is about a one inch gap between the edge of the roller and the machine that makes it difficult to get right up next to baseboards. That wasn't noticeable in this case until I did the test wipe. When it comes to open flooring, we tried a number of different surfaces and it did a pretty good job. But what about those once in a while heavier cleanups that a family might incur? So we gave it a try with dry cereal and then wet. Neither one worked great. Then we tried picking up after a big kid's mess. 
That worked a little bit better. A consideration that you have to make in any job is to decide whether the items that you're picking up are small enough to fit within the nozzle. Then we ran the 10 to 15 second self-cleaning mode. This assembly I found the nasty stuff on almost every part. So when it comes to cleanup, it did go fairly easily, but it's something to consider when you're thinking about the size of the cleanup that you have and whether it's worth going through all of the disassembly and cleanup of the machine. Overall, what do I think? Well, if you're looking for something to save you time and you have mostly hard flooring with a few area rugs, I'd say that this is a pretty good value. Well, I did work up a little bit of sweat. It's been a while since I've been back to Orange Theory Fitness, so I'm probably a little out of shape too. As for me, I'm ready to trade in the Swiffer and go with this. If you're familiar with the Bissell Crosswave, please leave your feedback about how it worked for you in the comments section below. Thank you so much for watching Regular Guy DIY. If you like what you saw, please give the video a thumbs up. It really helps the video performance on YouTube so others can see it too. And let me know what DIY projects, tips, or product reviews you'd like to see. I'm going to give a fist bump to my subscribers. If you're not one, hit that subscribe button now and ring the bell so you don't miss out on anything. Thanks again for watching Regular Guy DIY. You got this.